Hello friends, this is Kara Renee with Be Reborn Art and Healing coming to you with another uh, video in the Autumn Garden Journal. And as I do in every video that I'm making ephemera or doing anything with this journal, I do let you know that this this is the this journal is the grand prize for the 2,000 subscriber giveaway on the channel. We hit that some time ago. We are nearing uh, 2,400 right now. So <clears throat> phenomenal growth. So in order to be qualified for the drawing um, there are two prizes let me back up a second there are two prizes one is the grand prize which is this journal the second prize is the autumn diary journal there is a playlist um, over on my channel you can check that out <clears throat> there's also a playlist for the autumn garden journal so in order to qualify for the <clears throat> for the drawing you need to be number one you, uh, you need to be uh, living in Canada or the United States. I, at this time, do not have the means to ship internationally, so I do apologize to all of my beautiful international friends. I'm still trying to figure out a workaround there, um, but at this time, I, just, I can't do it. So um, you need to go to each of the playlists, be a subscriber, like each of the videos in each of the two playlists to be qualified for either of those journals, and then leave a meaningful comment. And basically by meaningful, I just mean anything that's engaging. So tell me a joke. I don't even care. Tell me a joke. Um, tell me something about yourself that um, that you're proud of. Tell me something about your family. Um, anything that that kind of enables a conversation. I really, really love that on the channel. I'm getting to know you all and you're getting to know me and we're getting to know each other. So it's a really beautiful thing. So today what we're gonna be working on is we're gonna be sewing in the signature. So this is a three signature journal. And let me pull over the dimension sheet here so that I can talk with you in case you haven't been following along. This journal <clears throat> measures uh, six by nine, six by nine. Well, it's kind of hard to tell here because it's this is a gatefold journal. So hang on, let me back up and just move this stuff so I can show you. So those are the journals. I've got my wax thread for doing the signatures. I have my needle, and this is going to be the closure, which I'll show you here in a little bit. I did find some brads that are going to work. Um, it has hardware, but they're screws, and I've, obviously I can't put screws through this journal because they're they're fairly longish. I'm going to be using E6000 to hold that on as well as probably some Fabri-Tac which let me while I'm saying that let me get this out. I keep it in this little bottle that allows it to always be flowing to the end um, so that when I'm ready to use it it is there and ready to go. Um, this is my template. We are going to be doing a hidden spine. So this is my template. I'm going to show you how I do a hidden spine. I've done many, but I've never actually showed it on camera. So we'll be doing that. And uh, we'll be putting, again, we'll be putting the closure on. So this is what the journal is going to look like. This is the spine. And this is a second kind of spine. Um, it's just the edge of this side. So it's going to go like this. So it almost looks like a box with no bottom and no top. And um, the clasp is going to go here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it on camera um, simply because I think I'm going to have to have my husband help me hold this together because see what it does? It just wants to separate. So I've already um, done a lot of manipulating of this this board to keep it to make it a little bit softer and more pliable but as you can see it is still pretty tough but we'll see how it goes we're going to focus on getting the signatures in and then i will as i'm doing that i'll think about whether or not we want to try that on camera i'm not sure so so anyway that is that so this is um, these are the measurements so when i did this journal I did this on camera. We had this piece that is six by nine, which is the actual height and width of the journal. I notice I've got some puckering of this fabric. I might have to come in and tack that a little bit more or spray it or something to have this really fine, uh, see this lace is moving around. So that's probably not gonna work. I'm gonna have to figure out how to, how to rectify that. Uh, maybe I'll just brush on 
lightly some glue or fabric tag or something. So that's the back piece, six by nine. And then um, each of the other pieces is obviously cut um, different um, to make up. This is two and three quarter inch spine, two and three quarter inch spine. And then um, this piece was, um, this is, yeah. Those are the spines, one piece, sorry. This is four and a half by nine, and this is one and a half by nine. And so that's how I got this to all go together. So that's what we've got. So our spine is gonna be sewed in here. So that's what we're gonna start with first. I did forget to grab my little um, yucky foam here, so I'm trying to grab it. It's under my desk. <laughs> I have to grab it with my foot. I don't wanna get my head in camera, hold on. <laughs> Goodness gracious, so I'm gonna set that aside for when we're ready, but we're not quite ready for that yet. So I first wanted to show you kind of how a hidden spine works. So um, rather than stitching through the hard, the, the um, chipboard and having our strings on the outside, the strings will not show. The binding is not going to show. And I'm absolutely loving that process. So I do realize I do need to grab my uh, book binding glue because when I when I glue in the hidden spine, I use Fabri-Tac and I use my PVA glue. So I just reached for that. So um, what we are going to do is we're going to use the same weight of chipboard as the cover is made out of. I think it's a 50, 50 pound weight. I don't know how that exactly works, but it's that. And then this, we're going to cover this. So obviously we don't want that cardboard to show. And as I mentioned in another video, knowing that I was going to put a piece here for the hidden spine, I didn't need to put this piece of paper, but it's not, uh, it's not a big deal. I'm just going to put this over it. And so that's going to be our hidden spine. So I wanted to show you the template that I make. So I'm going to move this out of the way so that you can see how I make my own uh, hidden spine template. So this is a three signature journal and um, I'm going to do a, a three pamphlet stitch, which is what I always do. So the first thing that I do is this, pa this piece of paper is just a white piece of copy paper, kind of a, it's a 65 pound weight. And so basically I cut it uh, approximately the same. It looks like this is a little bit longer. How did I manage that? Um, hold on, hold the fort. Yeah, so the paper's fine. I didn't trim off this one end apparently. Let me grab my scissors really quick and fix that. We want it to be the same length so that everything lines up really well. So I'm just gonna cut that edge off like so. And we're going to, uh, so what I do is I take that paper, and again, it's measuring two and three quarters by the height, eight and a quarter. Um, I believe this was eight and a quarter because um, obviously it's not the full height of the journal. So, and I apologize, I don't recall, and I don't have my ruler here handy uh, to show you an exact measurement. So basically what I do is I take that piece, I fold it in half, so I'm just going to pick it up so you guys can see. I've fold it in half. Okay, give it a good crease. And then I also like to ink this um, as I go because I want to be able to see these lines really well as I move through this process. So I'm going to go ahead and ink that edge. And then I fold it, then I open it up again and then I fold it, um, this edge into that fold. So right there and I'm going to again hold it up because that's easier for my old eyes. Give that a crease, ink it. We're going to go over here and we're going to do the same. We're going to fold it to the center. Sorry that's getting in the way. And then give it a good crease and ink it. And then, um, then we're going to do another fold. So then we go back, you're going to turn it over so that your inks, your ink markings are down. And then I fold, um, let me see how I did this. Oh, and then this gets folded here uh, up to that fold line. And I will show you this again in just a second because I, I know this is a little bit rough out of the gate. So there's that. And then we do the same thing with the other end. 
again folding it up to that section um, and you're basically just cut you're just folding this proportionate I mean because you're folding each of the folds into itself first in half and then let me show you that again I never really explained it so I apologize so this was our paper we took it flipped it over we folded it in half okay like that and then we inked it and then we opened it and we folded it in half um, to the to that fold so the center fold and then half to the center fold and then half again and half <laughs> half again so the reason for that is because I don't want my three signature holes to go here here and here because those are way too close together in my opinion so this fold is actually not necessary I use it because I know it's accurate because then when I do this fold I know it's accurate so I leave that I just know that I'm not going to use it the second thing you're going to do once those are all inked is you're going to go ahead and flip it this way and you're going to fold it in half the long way and I'm working with 65 pound paper so it is a little bit hard to do because it's heavy paper and again it doesn't have to be precise as I mentioned every video uh, perfection is not at play in the studio and um, that applies today as well <laughs> so there we go so we folded that in half okay and I darkened that up there and then we have so now we've got our center signature uh, for our center holes so now we're going to do the same thing we're going to turn this over we're going to fold this edge into that fold and again I'm going to pick it up because it's really hard for me to uh, fold this paper so I should, probably should have used something lighter but um, goodness gracious could always um, you know do a um, do a score line I guess but again I don't I'm not looking for it to be perfect so I'm just going to give that a good crease with my fingernail and ink that edge like so kind of like we're making a little bit of a checkerboard so we're going to do that again I'm going to fold this into the center fold I should have probably inked that but we're too far into this to do that now <laughs> I'm just going to do my best and again I don't um, it doesn't matter it really does not matter if it is perfect um, unless you're a perfectionist <laughs> which which I am by nature but I've learned to not be so basically then what we have is we have four equal equal sections here and we have two equal sections here two equal sections here and a larger gap in the middle so when we so when we mark out our signatures I'm going to do uh, for instance my first signature is going to go the first hole is going to go here the second hole will go here and the third hole will go here and conversely on each of those points and that's going to make sense as we go along here so that is that and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to first mark well I first need to probably glue this on I should have done this ahead of time I am going to use my fabric tack and I'm going to ink it up really quick though because I don't want that to be all all um, boring uh, because it will show these edges will show on the inside of the book and then we will also probably ink the um, well let's just ink the chipboard now too may as well cut the ink out and again that that may peek through it may not we'll see I am just using the same weight of chipboard as I used on the cover because it's what I have um, you you could go lighter the the, um, the hidden spine doesn't need this thick of a piece of, of material but it's what I'm using so I'm going to go ahead and glue this on my paper onto my hidden spine if I can get my Fabri-Tac to behave here There we go. It should be good. It's all going to be sewn into it. So 
and I just want my flowers to go there just these little cute flowers so I want those to be going the right direction so um, so I'm going to be looking at that directional um, clue on this paper to remember what is the top of my spine and what is the bottom of the spine so I'm just going to spread that out and then we're going to go ahead and make our holes in the hidden spine first so let's get our our little um, ugly foam things over here. I'm going to get my awl <clears throat> and move some things out of my way here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this down on here, right like that. And as you can see, it ma it matches exactly, exactly. Like I don't see any of that white paper, so that was a really good cut. So we're going to do that. And I don't, um, you could obviously clip this if you felt um, more comfortable with that, but I'm just going to hold it and I'm going to go ahead and poke my hole. So I'm going to do my first hole here. And it's a little tough because I'm going through a chipboard. So, and then another one here, that's our middle signature. And this is our last signature. And then I'm going to hop down to the middle. So this was the middle, exact middle line. So I'm going to punch that hole. Whoops, get over a little bit more. My eyes are not great. There we go. And then here. And then here. I hope you guys will find this useful too. Um, I know that I learned to do it by from people that really had a way of explaining it that made sense and was um, step by step, you know, slow mojo. <laughs> so there we go. So those are all of our holes are now in our spine. So there we go. And they're fairly visible too. You can see those. They're all there. This one ended up in the middle of that flower, which is kind of funny, but they're all there. You can see that on the back. So now what we're going to do is we're going to bring our signatures over and um, I'm going to give you a little bit of a flip through because I have not done that. But um, this, let's see, what did I want to be the first signature? I want this to be the first signature. So I believe um, I was going to originally do three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight pages in each signature. I did add another one because I didn't have any coffee dyed paper in here and I wanted that. So, um, so here we've got um, the cover. This is a piece of the kit on vellum. And then it had, I had some problems with the stitching. Um, oh, I've got another spot there that's got a hole. I'm going to have to grab that. Where's that washi tape? Where's the washi tape? Let me move my keyboard here and see if I tossed it in this multifunctional dish. Let's just fix this now because I'm going to forget. I kind of like the look, but I um, I had trouble with the vellum. Um, it my, I think my tension or whatever was just too too tight. So... I'm just going to go ahead and trim that off, but I kind of like the look of that, that tape. So, um, and then we've got a vintage music page, which I've also stabilized with a piece of, um, boy, that looks terrible. Goodness gracious. We might cover that up with something. Maybe we'll put a side pocket there. Uh, a vintage uh, music page, um, a doily. This is a coffee dyed doily. And I just uh, cut off the top and the bottom to make it even and the right size. Another page from the kit. Um, this is a, um, whoops, it's all offline, all out of out of line here. There we go. Um, this is a, a vintage um, paper from a magazine. And I just liked it. Let me just show you what it looks like. I think it's really precious. Close to stand, close to say goodbye in. <laughs> so I just thought that, and even this one was not bad. So we'll be making some little pockets and whatnot out of that. So that's going to go in here. And I forgot to grab my jar of clips. So I'm going to do that really quick because we are going to need more clips than I have here. It's just right within reach here. There we go. And then we've got um, another kit page. And then this is coffee dyed paper. This is actually the coffee dyed paper I just did recently that I took some photos. I didn't do it on camera. I took some photos and, and posted them. And then this is a page on vellum and I'm gonna make like a little foldy out thing. 
So that is that. So that is our first signature. So I will show you the other ones as we go, as we get them into the journal. So I'm going to find the middle. Um, this is the middle. This is going to be tricky because I'm working with vellum. You know what? I may not, I may need to switch that. I think I'm going to switch that. Vellum is not a great paper to have in the middle. So because it's not, it's going to slip and slide. So I'm going to go ahead and just switch those really quick. So there's our middle and I'm just going to kind of tap. Again, I don't worry too much about perfection uh, as, as far as um, everything just lining up perfectly. I'm going to fold that just to make sure everything looks good. I'm going to grab some clips. <clears throat> and uh, come on. And I'm just going to clip here. <clears throat> what is that? I don't know. And I'm going to clip here. I'm going to go ahead and close the, oops, I forgot something there. And I know the angle is going to be, get a little bit weird here, so I apologize in advance for that, you guys. I will show you in detail how I do this on the first one, and then I will probably speed up the video because um, you don't need to see and hear me yakety yakking uh, real time the whole way. So I will be very deliberate here on the first one so that you guys can catch everything that you feel like you need to catch. So I'm grabbing another clip. And I am kind of um, fussing with that because I want to make sure that I don't have any bowing, uh, it, you know, because there's a difference when you do this. So see how we've got those gaps versus when you kind of close it. So that's kind of what I'm looking for there. And then the number one tip is make sure that your signature is not upside down like that is. So I need to turn that back around. So this is my front. And it's got some weird stuff going on here. We need to release this clip. Yeah, that was a little bit too, too constricted. So let's try that again. And then this one feels like it is as well. But again, it's not a worry. So it's tight though. I need to fix that because I want to make sure that it's not going to do anything weird or um, if if the middle fold doesn't line up completely, you're going to get things out of line when you sit, stitch it in. So there is that. So now what I do is I just take this and I'm going to look at this line here. And I should have inked that. I'm going to put a little pencil line here just so I can... Whoops, that was terrible. I feel like this is not... This needs to be flatter. Something's not, not right here. Try again, try again. It's after work, it's a Friday, I'm exhausted, <laughs> completely exhausted. Uh, it was a good week, it was good to be well, and I was glad to be well and back to work, but um, our kids just, they're exhausting. <laughs> I work in special education, so it's, it's really a challenge. So what I'm gonna do is I obviously don't need to use this whole template, right, for this signature so I just kind of fold it in half like that and then just line this up I can see that hole actually let me um, yeah I, th I think I can see that okay so I'm going to just line it up here obviously it's going to be the height of the actual signature so see that that's my that's my signature line and then here we're going to go ahead and line that up and then I just go with a pencil first make my mark. I'm just going to make a pencil mark here, a pencil mark in the middle, and a pencil mark at the top. Okay. And I'm going to kind of eye spy, make sure they all look like they are pretty much on that, that fold and they look to be okay. And so actually once you use this, you could actually trim off some of this and, and get a more precise, you know, location on it, but it's not a big deal. So we are ready to sew the first signature in. So I'm going to get my thread ready. I'm just using this wax thread that's kind of this um, kind of a beigey cream color. I like to go, I need to unravel some of this. 
it's getting sort of till the end to the end I like to go long because I like to put dangles on these so I'm gonna go a little bit longer than I need to and there we go and actually let's go ahead and do all three of these at the same time because then I don't have to recut the thread so I'm just gonna try to pull this out and then just give that a clip and yeah, one more the signature, um, which you're going to see when we put it, these in, there's going to be a lot of gap in between the signatures, and I, that's on purpose because I like to put folios and stuff inside or other insertable um, pieces, so those spaces will be filled by the time this is done. So there we go. We're going to set that aside. And so what I also love about this, then I don't have to be fussing with, can you imagine trying to throw so three signatures into this? It would be so hard. So I'm gonna be saving myself a lot of headache in this particular project as well. So here I've got my needle and my wax thread. I'm just gonna go ahead and get this threaded. And then I like to leave um, a good, you know, I, I pull it fairly good, but you know, a, a long tail. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to, I do a three pamphlet stitch, which is why we have three holes. And then I like to, um, oh, I need to poke the holes first. Pencil marks are not going to do, Karen Renee. <laughs> so and there's a trick here. Now is the point where you want to kind of fold your paper, your signature a little bit so that you get that hole through at the same point in all the papers. So there we go. That looked pretty good. And again, it's not, it's not a perfect art, in my opinion. I'm sorry about my arm in the way. Um, oh, goodness, that's tough. Why are we having so much trouble there? There we go. And then down here. And I, again, I'm just poking through those pen pencil marks. There we go. Boy, that was a lot of paper came out of that one. That's okay. So now we can go ahead and put this under. And again, I do apologize that the angle on this is going to be strange. So I'm going to go in through the middle hole because I like my, I like my um, threads to hang through the signature. So I'm going to just put that through there. And I'm just going to pull it through so that I feel confident. And then I'm going to get my template. And this is the first signature. So, and again, for this, I've got directional paper. So I'm making sure that it's going the right direction. And so I'm going to go into this middle hole on the left. So I'm going to pull, go through that hole. Hopefully I'm thinking about this correctly. It is a work day. <laughs> It is a work day. There we go. So, come on, pull. You do have to be um, patient because it's it's kind of hard to pull through all of this all of this uh, mess here. So I'm leaving a good tail here, uh, probably about three inches or so, maybe four. And so that's that. And then I'm going to go um, to the either the upper or lower. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to go to the upper hole. And then I'm going to go in from the back into the holes in the signature. I'm going to find them. Okay, Kara Renee, you can do this. You, you don't want to force it because you don't want to make a hole that wasn't, wasn't intended there. So that's why I'm a little bit, a little bit posy there. There we go. So now we're gonna, I'm just gonna look at the back and you wanna check and make sure you're going on the raw right line. So there's that. And then I'm gonna go down to the lower hole and I'm gonna go in from the inside of the signature and then go all the way through to the back. And then I'm going to, and again, this angle is tricky. I'm going to go into this hole here at the bottom. And then I'm gonna flip it over and make sure that that's right before I do anything else. So there we go. Oh, that, yeah, <laughs> like that. And I'm going to tighten this up just a little bit as I go because I don't want to give it too much strain later. So there's that. And, um, and then we're going to go back in from the outside, from the um, hidden spine, back through the middle hole. 
and back through the um, the middle hole of the signature. You do, and I apologize, it's hard for you guys to see. You want to make sure that you don't go through that wax thread and split your thread because that's going to weaken your signature. So I'm making sure that that thread is to the right of my needle. That's already in there, I'm hoping. Come on, Kara Renee. Boy, this is tough. The first one is always the hardest too, just for your information. Oh, come on, for goodness sakes. I'm gonna just kind of peek. There we go. <laughs> that angle kind of can throw it off too, so there we go. So we're gonna pull that through. Okay. I'm just gonna kind of look, I've got a lot of, of thread here, way more than I need. I'm gonna go ahead and pull my uh, needle off and then I'm gonna just give this a little tug, not too hard, and I'm gonna make sure that I've got one string on either side of the center string, which I do, and then I'm gonna go ahead and look at the back just to make sure that feels nice and tight, and it does, looks great. And then I'm going to go ahead and tie this, in a, I'm gonna tie this twice, once forward, Actually, yeah, once forward and once backward. I'm gonna do one more hole, or one more full, um, knot, rather. There we go. Okay, and then again, I like them to be long, so I'm just gonna kind of go out here. I can always shorten one or the other if I feel like it's too much. So, then what I do is I take my clips off like so, and my husband might be walking in the door shortly, so I may have to get up and shut the door because I don't want to, um, he'll know if my door's closed that I'm filming, so there we go. So then I just take those off and then I actually clip them together so they don't get in the way of the next signature sewing in. So I'm just gonna clip on the top and bottom and on the outer edge, like that. And then there, that's what it looks like. So this is what it looks like going in. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue. I'm gonna speed up the video a little bit um, just to not bore you to death. I will also show you the signatures as I go.
you guys, by the, <clears throat> by the time I get to the third signature, my hands start to get pretty darn tired. So I apologize for all of that angle. <clears throat> so we're just finishing up with the third signature here. Just trying to get it where it needs to go. There we go. My fingers are hurting <laughs> from trying to poke and pull through all that. Uh, probably would be a, a, ben, a better to not do this on a work night, but I have to. I'm behind still in my video videoing. So again, I'm usually I'm trying to get the string out. I'm usually like a week and a half, sometimes two weeks ahead. Um, so so yeah, I, I'm I'm not there, <laughs> but that's okay. So I'm just gonna give this a little bit of a tug here, and then we're gonna go up to the or through the middle again. I don't need this here anymore. Again, through the hidden spine into the signature. And again, trying to not cr uh, pierce that thread. And I think I might have done that a little bit on the other signature because I could feel the resistance pulling my thread through. But, you know, you, you can't, there's nothing I can do about it. So unless I want to completely undo everything, which I don't. So I'm just going to thread this back through the other edge. So we've got one, again, one string on either side of the, um, the center string. I'm going to go ahead and, if I can get a hold of it, I'm going to go ahead and give it a tug. Look to the back. Looks, look at that. Isn't that amazing? Love hidden spines. Now I'm going to get to show you how to put it in. So that string wasn't, I guess it was as long. So again, I'm doing three knots. so like so and we can trim that off and there we go so I'm going to again unclip these <clears throat> goodness the fingers are not working We are putting up our Christmas tree this weekend. Uh, my son's birthday is on December the 7th and we traditionally always get it before his birthday. So that's kind of always been the tradition. He is turning 38 this year. I cannot believe that I have a kid that's 38, but I do. There we go. So everything is nice and in. So you can see we've got um, a nice little gap between our signature sorry about that angle there and then we've got some room on this side and this side don't have as much room as I mentioned in an earlier video uh, in between and on the edges as I did in my sister's journal because I did a three inch spine I, I made this a little bit smaller so because I had way too much room and and that was yeah I didn't like it so now we're going to get this over here and what's going to happen is we're going to glue this in right here. And so I have to think about this a second though because usually I can stand my journal up like this and have it be um, able to kind of stand up to dry. So I'm just going to try to finagle this edge again and train it a little bit more and see if that helps. We'll see how that goes. Um, it should be okay though because what I do is I'll put a really large clip right here. In fact, let me see if I can grab one of those large clips. Just a moment, you guys. I don't even remember where they are. Hopefully it's not like a complete um, random hunt. Uh, it might be. <laughs> let me look in this. This whatever drawer here. Um, you know what? One of these will probably work. One of these big plastic paper clips. I might have an epiphany um, as we're doing this and figure out where the other ones are, but I don't know off the top of my head. Um, I don't think that they're in the sewing drawer here. Let me just look just for kicks, though. Um, I know I don't see them. 
old, so we will make it work. So basically what happens is when I glue this in, I then clip these together and it helps it to stand up so that it can dry. So what we're gonna do is we are going to first apply some Fabri-Tac and I'm just gonna go everywhere on this. Fabri-Tac is just having trouble though. I'm going way on the edge there, on all edges. Boy, my hands hurt. I don't know why. Whoops, we don't want that there. Get it off, get it off! <laughs> I don't want that glue oozing over onto my, my inside cover. Goodness gracious. I'm just gonna put glue everywhere here. Having trouble with this glue. It's a new bottle, so it should not be giving me so much trouble. Okay, so there's that. That feels pretty good to me. And then we're gonna also use the PVA glue. And I'm gonna grab my paper towel and just put that here so I don't get any glue on my inside cover there. And I just feel like this is a, just an extra stabilizing kind of step. Um, you don't, I don't think you have to do this, but because it's a hidden spine, it needs a lot of stability to hold those signatures in. Um, I have not heard that that's been a problem. I've done some hidden spines, but I, I give the journals away, so I don't know. I hope they're okay. <laughs> I hope that my, my followers or my subscribers will let me know if, if their journals crumble on them. So again, I'm going all the way to the top. If that oozes out, it's okay, because I'd rather have too much than not enough. So there we go. And then we're gonna go ahead and pick this up. I am gonna smooth out these edges just a little bit. Kind of um, just get it all the way to the edge there. And we might have some oozing, but that's okay. We'll deal with it. There we go. So I'm just gonna set that paper towel aside. And I'm going to make sure that I'm going the right direction. So my signatures, this is the right direction. So I'm gonna go ahead and just um, set this down, making sure my strings aren't in the way. It'd be ashamed to glue those in. There we go. And I'm just gonna place it down like so. I'm gonna scooch it where it needs to be scooched. And I'm gonna just, um, oh, what do we have going on here? That seems weird. Oh no, what is going on? Sorry guys, let me... Okay, I just have to make sure that that's all lined up because it's such a strange um, cover but I wanna make sure I don't make any mistakes with this. So I'm just gonna kinda of press here and I will have still another minute to fuss with this if um, something doesn't look right, but I basically wanna get rid of that extra glue so I don't transfer it onto anything else. And then we'll be pressing a lot and maybe I'll sing you a song <laughs> while we do that. So I'm just going like this, making sure that there's no, no, no restrictions there. Um, it feels like I've got a little restriction there on this side. Oops, wrong move, Kara Renee. I don't, it seems like it's too wide. I can't figure out why though. Um, I'm gonna just lift this up really quick. Does, is it wide? It is wide. It is too wide. So, we cannot, we cannot continue with it this way. So I am going to choose a side and I'm going to cut a little bit of it off. This is going to be messy so um, just bear with me. Um, we cannot have that um, that resistance though because that will um, compromise the book um, as it is opened and closed. So I'm just going to try to cut off. It looks like about a sixteenth of an inch. I don't know how I missed that. Um, that was that was total failure on my part. I'm having trouble getting my scissors in here. Okay, so you guys know what I say. Like when you encounter an unexpected 
issue. You just you just keep going. You just figure out what you need to do and keep going. Okay, so I think um, I'm going to put a little bit more Fabri-Tac on here just because I feel now concerned that we've waited a bit of time. Probably is okay, but I'm going to go ahead and be sure. We've got plenty of PVA glue, so there we go. And we've still got some on the base, so this should be much better. My apologies for that. That was that was not um, not well planned at all. So again, I'm just um, kind of eye spying, making sure that I've got a, a good gap in between this. So we can scooch that over a little bit and over a little bit, and then making sure that this is not going to have any pressure. Okay, so that feels good to me. So now we're gonna sing a song. So what do you wanna hear? <laughs> Frosty the Snowman. <laughs> My dad, um, my dad was a, a guitar player and a country singer, and he um, loved to sing the old country Christmas songs like Blue Christmas and, um, well, he sang Frosty the Snowman and all those kinds of, of, um, of songs too. Oh, that's perfect. But I just have so many songs in my head from, from those years. It's just so precious. Um, but he used to sing, you know, I'll have a blue Christmas without you. I'll be so blue just thinking about you. Decorations of red on a green Christmas tree. Won't mean a thing if you're not here with me. I'll have a blue Christmas without you. Well, no, I'll have a blue Christmas, that's certain. <laughs> that's enough of that. So, there we go. So, I have pressed this so on the edges. So, now I'm going to very carefully open up each of these and I'm going to press you know what I think I'm going to try to use my bone fold or I mean my my uh, all here and just press that down in between the signatures to make sure that we've got good contact like so and I'm and we're making it work because I can see there's glue oozing which is actually a good sign so that we're making good contact there so I'm going to do the same here I'm going to go ahead and put my um, all the end of my all in here we've got more oozing which means we need to press more because we want that to all be fantastic on occasion I've had to come in and put a little bit more glue like up at the very edge just to make sure that there's no gap but that's not a problem at all so I'm gonna again I'm gonna push 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 and then we're going, so I had hoped to do the closure, but I'm not going to be able to because I have to let this dry. So I didn't think that through very well. So I wish I had my big clips. Oh, there's one. I see it. I see it. Yay. <laughs> one of these mon Mondo clips. So I think what I'm going to do is try to take these ones off so that I can get a good grip with my bigger clips. So. And then what this allows the journal to do is stand upright. These these uh, signatures will stand upright for at least overnight uh, while that glue um, gets nice and set. Goodness gracious. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Fumble fingers. Okay, you guys, there we go. And so, I don't want to play with it. I want so much to show you what this is going to look like when it's closed, but I do not want to fuss with this and ruin it. So see how it's standing up all by itself? So that's because it is glued here at the base. It's pressed down in between every signature and then it's held together with a clip. So that is it. So I will be back in the next video and we will uh, hopefully put the, the um, closure on. I might do that off camera. I haven't decided. Um, it's a finicky kind of thing to do and I'm a little bit 
weary about doing it on camera, but we'll see. So thank you guys so much for watching. Check the description box for details on the giveaway and all the qualifications, and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.